I, I think of the meditations here for the group as being really in seven parts usually. And so I'd like to start by just explaining what those parts of the meditation are so you know. And while the meditation is really more about experiencing the meditation and just allowing it to be as it is, I, I don't want to ignore our minds and, and just let our minds take in kind of what we're going to do. And so we're going to start with Austra, Austra, if I could talk, that would be good, alternate nostril breathing. And then we're going to do um, a meditation following that where where we bring our awareness to the two sides of the body and to a energetic channel in the center of the body and this is really nice to do after the alternate nostril breathing we're going to be opening up our our some of our energy channels you could say they're not found under a microscope but you might feel a, a subtle flow you might feel some warmth or, or you might feel some expansion. Um, don't do the alternate nostril breathing if you're congested. We never wanna mess with that. And you can just breathe naturally for that part of the meditation. It's only a few minutes. Then after the side and central breathing, we're going to do an energy centers meditation where we're gonna start in the lower energy centers and we're gonna go all the way up to the crown. And then we're going to be doing a nervous system nurturing process where we go down around our bodies. And then we'll go to our heart for a kindness, compassion practice. And we'll radiate love and support out in all directions to all, to all people and all animals and all places in the world that we wish to give that love and support. And then we'll end with grounding and intentions. And so that, that is the structure. Of course, um, as we practice, that can change a little bit. And we'll kind of just see how that goes today. But it is, it is my intention to, to honor that. And um, we'll just get started now. It can be helpful if you get sleepy during meditation to have your arm up so that if it starts to fall down, it wakes you up. Um, if you're in any distress in the body, any pain, feel free to lie down for the meditation, feel free to stand up. If it helps you, always let your hands move as you meditate. This is why it's a little different, this meditation. If it helps you to make sounds as you meditate, like an om or any other mantra or sound that is helpful to you, instead of maybe following the breath, feel free to use sound. Your mic is turned off, so we won't hear you. And, and I guess the only other sort of bit of preparation is that before starting, if you have an intention for, for yourself, for your practice, it could be to, to experience more peace or balance, to experience spiritual joy, to have greater focus, concentration, to be open-hearted, to have kindness towards yourself and others, whatever your intention is, for, for meditation in general and for today's practice, it's nice to just honor that inner intention. And just take a couple nice deep full breaths as you prepare for alternate nostril breathing. And if you've never done alternate nostril breathing, feel free to have your eyes open. It's good to have eyes open for this part of the practice. And you can just follow along with me. I'm gonna just use one finger today and closing the right side, breathing in through the left to about the count of four. And when you're at the top of the breath, hold your breath and just notice your forehead. And then change sides and exhale from the right side, exhaling right. At the bottom of the breath, pause and then inhale right. 
At the top of the inhale, hold your breath and notice your forehead, change sides and exhale left. We'll start the next cycle, inhaling left, holding the breath and changing sides and then exhaling right. Pausing, holding the breath and then inhaling right. Holding the breath and noticing your forehead as you change sides, closing the right nostril and exhaling left. Holding the breath at the bottom of the exhale and inhaling right. Changing sides as you hold the breath, exhaling right. Pausing at the bottom of that exhale and then inhaling right. Holding the breath as you notice the forehead and you change sides, exhaling left. Pausing after the exhale and inhaling left. Holding the breath as you change sides and you exhale right. Pausing at the bottom of the breath and then inhaling right. Holding the breath as you change side and notice your forehead, exhaling left. Pausing at the bottom of the exhale and inhaling left. Holding the breath as you change sides, exhaling right. Holding the breath, inhaling right. Holding the breath and changing sides, noticing your forehead, exhaling left. And let's do two more breath cycles in your own way. Inhaling on the left. Exhaling on the right. And just keep going. Letting go of the finger on the nose and just noticing now your body as you gently return to regular breathing. Noticing the way you breathe in and the way you breathe out. And just gently bringing your attention to the right side of your body as you breathe in. And as you exhale, noticing the left side of the body. Your breath can be natural and just noticing the two sides of the body, inhaling and noticing the left, exhaling and noticing the right. And if you'd like, bringing your attention to the center of the body, you might want to focus on your stomach, chest and just feeling into that center place for a moment as you breathe naturally and you can imagine a column of light that starts at your sits bones and goes all the way through the middle part of the body all the way up to the very top of the head and just imagine this flowing light through the center of the body, allowing all of your senses to support you. And if you imagine light around you or you focus on the two sides of the body, all is well. You do this practice in your own way. And now we're going to do the energy centers part of our practice. 
Um, so just to begin, you might want to move around a little on your chair so you really feel the way your bottom sits against the surface under you. If you're lying down, focusing on your, your lower hips, your legs, um, your, where your sits bones are. If you imagine if you were, if you were urinating and you held the stream of urine, that would be that lower energy center. So you can just, you can do a, a squeeze there if you'd like to really, really find that part of the body. And just breathing naturally, fully, inviting your attention to go to this lower place in the body. You might sense your legs as well, your feet, the connection to earth, the lower back, the hips, and just breathing and connecting here. We are grounding and supporting our energy, our spirit, our emotions. And let's just bring in, as we breathe, an invitation for stability. There may be images or sounds that you associate with stability, like a mountain, roots, and inviting very, very deep presence and balance into this lowest chakra energy center, inviting safety. This is kind of like being your own caring parent that says, I, I am safe, I am protected. I am stable and strong. And again, sensing that mountain or roots, feeling the earth's energy here as you connect to your own stability and breathing deeply. And next, we're going to go to the lower belly. You might want to put your hand there. And just feeling this vast space. And I don't mean anything about body size. Energetically in our lower bellies, there is a container for energy, for power, for our intentions and our health and our our missions in life, our purpose. So just connecting to this lower belly as you breathe and let your breath invite a very healthy power, an expansion, a truth, an acceptance of who you are at the deepest level your own inner kindness, your own virtues and values here in the lower belly as you breathe deeply and maybe feeling also in your lower back. If there's a color or a shape or an image or sound or an kinesthetic feeling that you wish to bring to the lower belly to support you in in this deep acceptance of your own truth, your own purpose, your healthy power. And just breathing here, keeping your attention steady, full, loving. And it's totally perfect if you're just noticing the touch of your hand on your, on your stomach if you're noticing the feel of the chair or the surface under you, it's okay to go to whatever place of bringing your attention that is right for you today. And let's travel up the body now to the space of the solar plexus, the upper belly, and just noticing how this is a place of 
digestion, transformation. We're not just food, but also ideas and beliefs, purpose, communication, relationship gets digested here. So just feeling into any intentions you have for healthy digestion of all things, integrating, nourishing, and breathe fully and just imagine a beautiful light of any color there in that upper stomach, kind of right where your lower ribs are. Just feeling into that space in the back body as well. And you might not see a light or a color, but you can also think of one. And whatever you think of, trust your intuition here. And then moving to the heart center, you might want to put one hand or two hands there as you breathe gently, kindly into this place of emotions, of compassion and just honoring, honoring your feelings, honoring your caring and breathing fully into the chest, noticing the breath as it fills you. You might notice your arms, your back, your shoulders. And just breathing in a gentle radiance any color or word that is really kind. It might be that you speak to yourself now and ask yourself, how are you, dear? Or, hey, I feel, I feel myself right now. Whatever you wish to say to your heart. And honoring however you feel whatever words come. And then we're going to travel up the body to the throat center. And just, you know, give yourself a, a gentle touch there on your throat, maybe the back of your neck as well. And just honoring this place of communication, expression. Breathing and allowing a very easy, open flow of energy, thought, relating here in the throat. If anything feels tight, you might want to imagine a light or an element like water or the warm sun, just giving nurturing support and wellness to the throat to your communications, to your voice in the world, and also your inner voice, your inner thoughts right here in your throat. And gently moving up into the face and going with your attention to the space between the eyebrows, the forehead the center for intuition, inner knowing, and just invite your energy, your presence to receive and to be available to your knowing, to your inner knowing, to what is your felt experience and honoring this part of you that knows beyond the thinking mind or the moving body and just gently breathing and maybe if you wish imagining a color or a shape a kind of light in your head and in that area of your forehead taking your time 
And then when you're ready, gently bringing your attention to the top of your head. I like to put a hand there, just feeling where, where a crown would go. And inviting yourself into even greater connection with the divine, the universe. Inviting a deepening of your own inner knowing in connection with all the goodness and support of the universe. Bringing in any of your traditions or beliefs into this connection. And breathing fully. And now we're going to just gently, easily, you might want to bring your hands, both hands up and just feel into kind of where the part would be in your hair and give yourself a little gentle massage there as you continue to breathe. And just as though there were a cascading shower of lovely light, clear, maybe rainbow, whatever color or texture or temperature you imagine. It could be like honey, or it could be like sparkling little lights, or it might be a rainbow or a waterfall. And just imagine that you can, because you can, gently bring this quality that is so nurturing, nourishing, giving from the top of your head to around your ears, in front of your face. Feel free to use your hands to guide your attention behind your head. And just letting this honey or this sound or color or warmth or coolness cascade around you giving to you, making you feel so cared for. This is your own energy, your own inner kindness, and inviting the universe to assist you in this nurturing process as you bring your attention down around the throat, the shoulders, the back, the arms, in front of the heart space, the side body, and just keep going slowly, slowly moving this very soothing energy down and around your entire body at your own pace, continuing to breathe. Grounding your energy by feeling your feet, feeling into that lower energy center where your bottom meets the chair or surface under you. And feeling into this solid, supported state and presence that you are right now, as though you were seated on a very special chair or throne, really honoring your own sovereignty, your own presence, and just being, allowing, doing nothing, just being. From here, we're going to return to our heart space and bringing our hands into the meditation, bringing the hands together, perhaps in prayer position or just to rub the palms together, feeling that connection. The hands are in prayer position, gently, gently allowing them to go up towards the sky and maybe to the place of in front of your forehead 
and then letting them gently go down towards the earth, just feeling that central line, that line of connection. And when the hands have gone back to the heart space, if you wish to have a hand or both on the body, go ahead. And just taking some nice deep breaths into the heart as you feel comfortable. Imagining relaxation. This could be a sense of a beautiful day, a person or animal you love. Noticing the back of the energy heart and just imagining that there is your own guidance and support behind you as well as in front of you and honoring yourself as you bring into your heart space even more kindness for yourself. Imagining yourself in your day-to-day -day life, any moments where you struggle or you're tired or anxious and just breathing and giving yourself reassurance. You might speak a word inside like it's okay or I am human. And imagining someone you know who struggles, someone you care for, or maybe they don't struggle, they're just very happy and you imagine them. However that imagining comes, a moment, a smile, a presence, and just giving that same loving acceptance to them. It's okay, you're human. I want the very best for you. And just feeling your own loving kindness connecting with their loving kindness. Just like you wish to be well, they wish to be well. And allowing yourself to imagine a stranger, someone who you don't know at all, really. Maybe they served you a meal or they're a neighbor you've never talked to or someone on the bus or the metro. And just imagining the stranger. Maybe they, they were in your dream. And just imagining how they just like the person you love and care about. And just like yourself, the stranger wants to be happy, wants to have health, wants safety and connection. And from your heart, connect to their heart with loving kindness and maybe speak to them through time and space to the stranger saying, I wish you well, I wish you joy, I wish you compassion. I wish you energy and health and freedom. And now you can stay with other strangers doing the same practice. Or if you'd like, I invite you to choose someone who is a challenge to you. Perhaps you love them dearly, but they also challenge you. And think of your challenger and think of how they too, just like you, just like the person that's easy to care for, just like the stranger. The challenger also wants to be well, wants to grow, wants to have love, wants health, wants freedom, wants kindness. And just imagining that challenger and sending them loving kindness. You're a human like me. You're human like my friend. You're human like the stranger I thought of. And I wish you well. I wish you growth. I wish you evolution. I wish you freedom and kindness and love and support. 
And going back to imagining that person or animal that's easy to care about and thinking of them in their life, maybe in a moment of activity or a moment of rest. And again, sending to them your wishes for their health, their well being, their joy, their freedom, their connection. And bringing to mind yourself, thinking of yourself yesterday, a moment from yesterday, and giving that moment from yesterday your attention and sending through time and space to yesterday's you, a loving wish for ease, for connection with self, for health, for well being. And just breathing as you imagine yourself being filled with love, with kindness, with support. And bringing that love and kindness into the moment, into the right now of your body, of this time, feeling your body, feeling your breath, feeling the earth under you, supporting you. And breathing in as you imagine waves of loving light filling you like a gentle, loving balloon of light and joy and health and wellness. And feeling that radiate out all around you so that you become energetically large and expanded. And you can imagine, and if your hands go out, wonderful, let the hands move as though you were conducting an orchestra of loving kindness. And you can send this loving and kindness that you are radiating out in every direction in front of you, behind you, around you, above you, below you. And just imagine waves of light, Perhaps a word like acceptance or freedom or peace or joy going out in all directions to harmoniously connect with all of the earth, all the people, all the animals, all the insects, all the plants, and just sending in your own way this radiance, this love, this support, feeling the connection with the entire world from this place of joyful integration, presence, grounded support. And if at any time you wish to come back to giving this love to yourself, filling up with that light, filling up with that strength and that honoring. And right at this moment, others are sending you love and support. Allowing yourself to receive. You might feel the receiving through the back body or the top of the head or the heart or the stomach or the feet. And just noticing what is it like to invite this receiving of energy of loving kindness from the universe, from other people. And we're going to close our meditation with a deep intention for ourselves. So setting an intention for yourself, maybe just for today. Today, may I, whatever your answer is. And feeling the earth supporting you, feeling that connection to mother earth, soft, safe, comfortable, stable, grounding you in your own truth as you breathe with your intention for yourself.
And let's take three cleansing breaths when you're ready, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Go at your own pace. Make a long, beautiful sigh as you exhale. And when you're ready, opening your eyes and slowly begin to take in the room around you, colors, shapes, textures. You might want to just notice any squares or rectangles, circles. <laughs> hmm. I'm gonna share my screen again so you guys can see what the practice was. And I would love it if you took a moment to share what a highlight in your own meditation was. When we share with the group, we're really supporting each other. It's, I know I get told often that one of the favorite things that people feel about this meditation group is to be able to connect to what other people's experience is. You know, oftentimes we go to things like this and, and we don't really know what's going on for other people. So I think this is a time to really to really share and, and if anything came up that wants healing, to invite the group to give, to send to you their, their loving support. Oh, beautiful shares and there's some hands up, wonderful. So I'm gonna start with Adina, hello. Is it working? Yes. Great, how are you? Good. When we got to, um, when we were doing in the energy centers and you asked um, what we could picture, I pictured a, beard, a big deer stag spreading antlers all the way out to my hips. And then when we got to um, the heart center, it turned into even bigger, like a moose or an elk with stags, just like the antlers radiating out. And it was interesting when you asked, like, who's the person that is hard, challenging? And I, and I thought of my mother, because I think that recently I've been thinking about how we tend to, we all have a mother, and we tend to think that mothers are magical. And somehow we're allowed to tantrum, but mothers have to keep it together, and mothers have to somehow make it all right. And as I'm getting older, I'm thinking about the times when I wasn't aware or cognizant, mother being human and having the needs just like I have. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's so I wonderful. felt like this softening. And then when we got, you invited us to allow in the receiving of other people's love through our back. And I thought, wow, that's so, I never thought about that. I think that I think of my back as like I turned my back on someone. Um, I, I don't have, and I can realize that if I don't, if I turn my back on someone, they don't have my back because I'm not allowing it. Wow. It was like allowing the pores to start to open for people to have my back. That's so beautiful. That's such a, it feels to me like a really important discovery, you know, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah. And, and it's great to notice for everyone. Do you tend to, when you think of being open to a friend or to a situation that you want to connect with, does that opening kind of come from your front? Usually it usually does, right? We feel open and we sort of go like this. Well, one thing I noticed when, um, 
my body gave me a wonderful teaching of my back going into pain and my back body being in a lot of discomfort was <laughs> I even overemphasized my heart center and my front. And I went to this incredible healer and he said to me, all of your energy is coming forward. Let's just focus on receiving into your back. And it was a game changer for me just to shift. You know, it was almost like the pain was asking for it, asking for attention, but also just the energy to shift into all these different directions we have, I think is really healing. And, and some people are more back focused. So not everyone is front focused. You know, some people kind of lean back a lot. Um, or when they're standing, their hips are forward. So there, there isn't like a right way or anything. I just think it's nice to bring that balance and, and to have that kind of noticing like Adina had that's so powerful. Um, and Amanda, and please, anyone who has a share or a question, go ahead and raise your hand. Amanda, how are you today? Good. How are you? Good. I am. I, I love meditation today. Thank you. It meant a lot. I needed it. <laughs> um, I'm, I became aware, like um, Adina, of my mother. And, you know, she's been going through a really hard time lately. She's had, um, she's been abandoned by a relative caregiver. And she's um, unable to walk. She has balance problems. You know, there's neuropathy in her feet. Um, she can't really cook or clean for herself. And it's hard for her to get in, well, she can't get in and out of the bathtub by herself. And she's, you know, all of us live far away and we're trying to, everybody go over there and, and we're trying to work the system of getting her a caregiver in there through her insurance and everything. And I just, it's been really just hard. You know, I feel, I feel guilty that I can't be there. And so I just, she can be stubborn though. I tried to get her help years ago and she wouldn't take it. <laughs> and, you know, she was just counting that my, counting on that my sister would be able to do it, but my sister's got problems as well. And so she hasn't been able to do it. And, you know, I just really liked that I was able to send that to her today. Yeah, that was really beautiful. Oh, I'm sending her love as well. If you want to share her name in the chat that we can all send her. It's Hilda. Oh, <laughs> her name's Hilda. Okay. okay. But it was just really nice. You know, I hadn't thought about doing that um, before. You know, it's always, been, you know, I've always kind of been taking, I've always taken care of her. And of course, when she was able, she took great care of all of us. But it's been, um, it's just been hard to, you know, I feel guilty. I feel like I should be able to do more. I should be there all the time. And of course I can't. Yeah. But, you know, I just hope that I'm, that me sending her this today, no matter what, you know, that she's just comfortable and she's okay and she's not lonely. And, yeah. and, and for whatever it's worth, intuitively, what I received right now was just if, if she's able to talk with you and you can share about the ways she cared for you, it might be a reminder to allow others to care for her, you know, just yeah. to be witnessed in that less directly that she could, that you do appreciate the way she cared for you. Yeah, it, it's funny you say that because I spoke to her yesterday and I, we were talking, I said, um, I told her I had made something that she used to make, you know, for dinner yesterday. And um, I said, I always, you know, every once in a while I'll say, nah, it was good, but it wasn't mama made, you know, <laughs> she, she always cooked a lot. You know? uh, and that kind of tickled her, you know, she started laughing about it and everything, but um, yeah, I'm going to have to go up and cook for her now. So yeah, yeah, but I appreciate cool. that. I hadn't, um, I hadn't thought about, you know, I send it to people that I have greater problems or greater struggles with. And um you know, I just, she just came up in my mind and I thought, I really need to send this to her. She's the one that needs it, I think, more than anybody if I'm able to give it, you know, so that, that makes beautiful. me feel better to be able to send that to her. So yeah, thanks. and it's, it's a much more helpful experience, right, than guilt, because guilt tends to freeze us. I don't know if it does that to you, but it can be a very, like, you know, it can stop action, really. 
I try to talk myself yeah. out of it, but it's like, yeah. so hard, yeah. you know, and then it'll just sneak up on you sometimes. So. Yeah. But keep the meditation <laughs> going. I know you're doing a lot. And I think that really relaxes the, you know, because it's natural. There's nothing wrong with feeling guilt, but when we can relax into the presence and you're so good at that, Amanda. So thank you for being here and sharing your presence and Jaden. Hello. I don't hear you yet, Jaden. Let's see. How about now? Yes. Now. Perfect. Great. How are you? I don't know if we've met before. Uh, I've been to a couple of these. I don't know if I have ever uh, shared, but I love these when I can get to them. So thank you so much for uh, sharing and, and providing the, the space today. I'm currently in the search of my first apartment. It's been a pretty chaotic week of running all over New York City and going to the places and filling out applications and all of that. And I just came off of a very intense um, work stint as well for about eight weeks. I was working uh, 70 hours a week, seven days a week. So that's now over, but I'm still, you know, trying to find the time to sit back and rest a little bit. But I just kind of like jumped into this apartment hunt because I was so excited and it was like my prize at the end of the tunnel, um, not realizing just how much kind of like overwhelm and, and just emotional energy comes with that as well. And there was a moment yesterday where I, you know, my, I was with my parents and they were talking about all these possibilities and I just needed them to kind of like stop. I was like, I just need a silence for a few minutes. Like there's just something inside of me that was very like, I need to be with myself for just a moment and then I can continue. And when you said today to think back to a moment yesterday, and like give yourself love and kindness yesterday. That moment came so clearly in my mind and I literally felt my energy of today, this like more grounded, more relaxed presence go to this overwhelmed state yesterday. And I have never ever thought to give my past self that kind of energy. And it's just gonna totally change the way that I think in times of overwhelm now. Cause if, you know, obviously overwhelm comes and goes, right? It's not permanent. So eventually I will come back to a state of calm. And now knowing that in that state of calm, I can kind of retroactively give that to myself. That's just like such an empowering feeling that I have never thought to have before. It's going to totally change my practice. So thank you so much for that. I am just, so glad. And feel free to be a time traveler. Go way back. Yeah. Go back to a week ago. <laughs> Go back to that 70 hour work week, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and you can of course go forward too, but it, it is a really cool movement in meditation. Yeah, yeah. thank oh, you thank so much you for sharing. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I I used to do a weird thing when I was a little kid. So when I was in school, um, I can just remember being out on the playground, and I was always really overwhelmed by all the activity and the the playground energy of the elementary school it was a lot for me. And I would try to get with one friend like away from the big noise. And I remember for some reason always thinking, you know, at some time, and I would say this to my friends, at some time in the future, we're going to be really cool grownups. And we're not going to have any of this stress of being kids here in school at a playground. And I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know if that was suggested to me or something as a strategy. I have no idea where that came from. But it's fun now to send her back there in fourth grade or something that that support because there's I think there's always a reason why we remember certain key moments and not others. I mean, of course, there's always the trauma reason we remember more when we're when we're in a state of, you know, something hurting us. But there's also just random moments we remember from the past. So sometimes it's nice to just remember those random moments and give to ourselves the reason I brought up, though, today, the thing about yesterday is I was listening to an interesting talk about past lives. And this spiritual teacher was saying, you know, it's really important to have equanimity and balance and serenity before you do any past life work, because you might be shocked. It might not be what you, you know, it might not be that you were this wonderful person or even a person or whatever it is from his belief system but it's really good to have equanimity first 
And, and that made me think how just, just being able to go back in time one day is a wonderful practice when we feel that balance and peace to go back just one day at a time. Um, and I think a lot of times we're in a little bit of a rush spiritually, like we're in a rush to have openings and attainments and levels and all, and to be the universe and all this stuff. And I love those ideas. I love those experiences, but also just letting go of it all. And I know this is a very active meditation. So I take you through a sequence that's very active. You're doing a lot, but just know also that five minutes a day of just being with your breath and doing nothing and giving yourself permission to do nothing for five minutes is I think just as healing and important as any of the, these practices where we are doing. I honestly don't know what would happen if I invited people to just come for a silent meditation. I, I don't know how many people would stay, um, but maybe one day we'll try that. <laughs> okay, Joan, hello, Joan. Okay, Magalie, there, there are so many things that, that happened in that brief time, so many affirmations. Your guidance is just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And so many times through this, you would lead us in a place where I've been needing to go and, and hadn't gone. The healing that happened during the initial stages of, the, of, of our, our meditation. And then when we were giving the loving kindness, I was, I was sending it out to people. I have several friends who are extremely ill and I was sending it to them. And then all of a sudden someone popped into my mind. And, and I thought, what, what's, what's happening there? And I sort of let it go. And then you said, think of somebody who's a challenge for you. And all of a sudden that person popped back in and I'm thinking, what, what's that all about? That's your... And then when you said, it's maybe somebody that you really love and it just, you were just describing to a T what was the situation, but there are some aspects there. And so then I was able to spend some time focusing kindness on that situation and, and reflecting on that situation. And, and, several times this has happened in the past a, a color would come and then you would say you may be a color or something would happen and immediately you would you would in your dialogue come come along with something and the, it just all these wonderful things happen throughout it but something happened that I feel I should be sharing and that is when you had us massaging the top of our head and talking about that I went for my walk early this morning and when I'm walking I often do my praying and the 23rd psalm is part of my prayer and as I'm walking and the the part about you anointed my head with oil my cup overflows I'm thinking now what is that all about and I was trying to figure out what that really meant and trying as I'm walking and 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 trying to imagine how, what I'm supposed to get from that expression and didn't you talk about the, the the light coming out and all of a sudden I connected to that part of the prayer and I could feel honey coming out tying up with a, a scripture from yesterday giving you the land of, of of honey and and my whole body as you were putting us through that this wonderful golden warmth and honey poured right over my whole body and I perceived it as a protection that my body's protected and it was just so beautiful but I couldn't get over the tie-ins how just you know half hour ago I had this questioning what does that mean I anointed my head with oil and then you bring something to it that brings extra meaning and extra extra life to that experience Aww. so thank you thank you thank you for sharing and it, it points so clearly to how these different traditions have have meeting places so you know that that that's in the christian tradition and also in buddhism and hinduism it's a similar and taoism as well this is a this is an area where the divine gives that that beautiful protection and grace so thank you for sharing oh. <laughs> And I don't know if any of you have ever experienced this, but sometimes we, we experience like tingling on our crown or heat or, or energy there of some kind. And, and it can feel for some people like too much. So I really honor and respect that. And I like to teach techniques for, for soothing that. But also I find it's really important just to notice who am I around right now? Or what am I doing that might be connecting me a little bit more 
with the divine or with the universe. Because I find that that sensation is usually a message that either the person I'm with or the, the thing that's going on is very um, important and very connected on a, on a deep level. So just wanted to share that if that's happening to anybody. And, and Lauren, oh wait, hold on, I hit unmute. I hit mute, I meant to hit unmute, there we go. Hi, Lauren. Hi, hi, thank you so much for this experience and just leading us through that. And even just to go off of what Joan was saying and what you're saying, I have chills throughout my whole body. Uh, yesterday, just real quick, I was, I went to service and I brought a friend who hasn't been in, she's, she grew up with the Catholic faith and she hasn't been to any type of service or any type of that in 11 years. And she's having like all these realizations and I felt an insane amount of buzzing through my head. And I was like, whew, like, okay, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. And so just to thank you for reaffirming that uh, in that experience yesterday. Um, but something that really showed up for me, I'm currently in this transition phase of my coaching and I'm searching for answers on like what direction I really want to take it. And I've been noticing, I've been holding my breath a lot more and feeling like this level of resistance and uncertainty. And also I've been dealing with a little bit of like gut issues and kind of exploring what that is. And um, as oops, someone was calling me, sorry, okay. as I was going through the meditation, we were focusing on our stomach and just breathing into our stomach. I really resonated with you were saying, it's not even just about your digesting, like with your food, but like, what else are you not digesting or what could you be digesting a little bit more with like your feelings and your emotions and something with that just like really resonated and just becoming more mindful about like what experiences am I not digesting and like what is really might be causing this uh this limitation in my body and like this feeling in my body it might not be my food it might actually be something a little bit deeper so that's really powerful yeah yeah and, and Thank you. um just something that came up when you were talking about having the intensity up here, maybe you already do this, but just to, if it helps to bring back that grounding presence again, so that that what you're, if you're receiving a kind of blessing or a connection of some kind, it has an easier time moving through the body mm. if you're really grounded. Mm. So sometimes it's really noticing the feet. And I think you're absolutely on the right track there with the, the digestion. Like I know I just moved home. So you guys can see I have a new, uh, I have a new, well, it's not, it's a very old fireplace, but I have a fireplace behind me now. Um, and, uh, you know, all that upheaval of transition, I was having a stomach ache. And the meditation helped me because it gave me an opportunity to think, wow, I need to digest and integrate this whole process of change. So, and you're going through a lot of change. So that has to be digested. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank thank you. you. Thank you for sharing. And Dave, hello. Finally, a gentleman here. <laughs> Hi there. I think you're. Oh, okay. oh there you, you go. I hear oh, you. How are perfect. you? Hello. I'm fine. First time here. My oh. daughter invited me. It's wonderful to be here. You have a beautiful voice, a beautiful presence. Um, really nice. What I found fascinating was uh, the idea of receiving love through your back, but just the whole idea of receiving love was mind-blowing to me because uh, as a man in the west um, we have trouble showing our love to begin with of course and so we work on that uh, and try to understand how to show our love because we're supposed to be stoic um, but receiving love it occurred to me that um, that wouldn't be active I'd never I never thought of it as a as something that an action that you could take yeah. But it certainly is. And so that's going to be the subject of my meditations going forward for quite a while to understand how um, crippled I am. Crippled's not the right word. How um, adolescent, no, infantile I am. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding how to receive love. Uh, I wonder if um, women 
uh, aren't exactly the same way. They've never considered or they don't consider receiving love as an action as uh, and to be grateful and uh, and uh, yeah. When I think about all the people that love me and how I can be actively receiving that love, it's like wow, powerful. that's yeah. that's awesome stuff. Yeah, Thank wow. That. Thank you for bringing attention to that, and I love your open sign behind you. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's exactly. I I turned it on for these things for that reason. Yeah, I'm trying it's, to stay open. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, and and I you know in. I work often with couples and coaching and we'll do a little practice where um, one person, it doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, but one person puts one hand over the other hand, like, am I saying it right? Like person A has their hand like this, person B has their hand like this. And one is the receiver and one is the giver. And that's all they do for like one minute, receive and give. And then, and then change positions. Yeah. And so that's a fun exercise to do with a partner, with a friend, with a child, with anybody. And just to bring that focus for one minute on the act of not just giving, but also receiving. Yes. It, yeah. And I think you pointed to, for not just men, but women too, often um, that receiving of love is where there's an obstacle. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the group too. Thanks. Hi, Sue. How are you? Hi, pretty good. Hi. How are you? Good. Thank you for thinking me still. I think it's late for you. It's okay. No, it's early for me. It's only 11 here, but I think you will be our last share of the day. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I'm having problems. I think, um, it seems like I don't get that deep in the meditations. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Hmm, probably nothing. nothing. I feel wrong. no. <laughs> okay. No. So just, what um, what oh. feels best for you when you meditate? Is there one one part of this or any meditation that feels the most aligned with with you? Like for some people, it's just breathing. For some people, it's sound. For some people, it's looking at something um it's hard for me to tell it's hard for me to tell i mean i i'm having coaching from ci mm -hmm. and it's amazing but it's not the same is it mm -hmm. or is it are there elements that are the same as meditation as yeah as what you're doing because sometimes you also um call in different elements and stuff so i don't know i just seems to that i'm much deeper in the coaching than i am in the meditation and i'm not sure what i'm oh, doing that makes perfect okay. sense because you're working with one person you're focusing okay. on your resources so that might be a great way to approach meditation what are the resources whether they're metaphors or memories or elements whatever it is that you get in your one-on-one -on -one coaching and then just mm -hmm. sit for five minutes and invite invite all your senses and your breath and everything to be with like similar to your coaching session to what you're receiving from your resources from your creative mind mm -hmm. you know what i i think now that I'm, I'm talking about it i think i'm starting to be able to put some words to it i am um, it seems like i'm trying to do everything at once and I get confused about, but I'm having this in UHPW too. I'm having that problem that there's so many things that need to be done that I'm having. So maybe that's just mirroring that, that there's so many things that I need to do, or I've had, have had, I have had to do yeah. that I'm, it's hard for me to zero in on one thing. Maybe that's coming out now. Yeah, it, that's, great. Very, that's great. That's great. Noticing. Yeah, that's great witnessing. So I would, I would definitely suggest the more concentration practices where you just bring your attention to one thing like the breath or one resource for just one minute at a time and feel really good that you did that for one minute and then see how it is for two minutes. But just bringing that focusing because when we're having a lot of that, I don't know if you would use the word overwhelm, but multiple things happening it's really grounding and centering just to come into one thing. Mm -hmm. 
And so when you, um, at the beginning, when you said, think of your intention, it's like, I wanted all of them. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can't do that, right? I mean, you have to take just one. And then I say, well, which one's more important? And no, I, let's, I, let's just instead give yourself permission to speak intentions, all the intentions you want, speak them out loud for one minute and just let yourself have all those intentions. Because sometimes we're vast and we have to just invite all of that in. Mm -hmm. So I know I gave you kind of a non-answer. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, it's, it's good. I, I'm, I guess I just need to zero in and maybe I need to talk to my coach about that too in an individual session. Sure. Because I, I think that's one of my problems is that I've always had so many things coming at me and I've had to do them all at once. And Yeah, so I'm this new desire. Yeah, so it's a goal for focus. I think that's wonderful. It's a beautiful yeah. goal. I have that same goal. I'm with you. I, okay. I share that goal. Focus. Okay. Thank Thanks you. Much. And let's just let's just go to gallery view and a call out to my friend Eric. Hi, Eric R. Good to see you. So let's just go to gallery view and 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 send one last moment to send love and receive love to everyone in this group. Okay. And I go to my gallery view and then someone puts me back in. That's okay, sending and receiving. All right, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and week and hope that we can be together again next week. Take care, bye-bye.